Here at Otondo, we walk in and you feel a different feeling. It's just the unity. It doesn't matter if you are a kindergarten teacher or a fifth grade student, we know one another. We know our families, even being a large school. There's no bullying, there's no picking each other, it's just nothing but acceptance and caring. I love Otondo, Otondo's like a family. The youngest person to make it to the top of Mount Everest was Jordan Romero, who did it at age 13. What? what? That's very young. Lisa Ball, who is the area director for Special Olympics, she had her son here at Otondo when he was in second grade and approached myself and another teacher, Mrs. Jones, that she wanted to bring Special Olympics for us to attend an event. Walking in, having our students introduced, seeing the parents in the stands crying, teachers crying because their child's attending a sporting event that they never thought would ever be possible. I found Lisa and told her, I want to be a part of this because just seeing parents smile because their kids are being included in something. So the following year, I started working with Special Olympics. So we started off the first year, probably, it was really small, about 25 kids, to right now we have about a team of 70 that goes. Probably after the third year, where word got around on school that there's a unified sports team, kids from every grade level would just come up and ask me, are we gonna do this event again? Can I be on the team? My friend was on it last year, I wanna be on the team. Can I choose my partner? Can I choose my athlete? Inclusion has just really been tremendous here in the school. You'll see the kids playing on the playground together or they'll just even start practicing our Special Olympics events so that they're ready for it. We were all a little scared at first, for sure. Practicing and doing different things, and now we're just there to have fun, and that's okay if we just have fun. Mm -hmm. Unify, it was a spark in this inclusion pathway and this journey that we're taking as a school, and it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it, and I think it's definitely something that not only the kids benefit from, but our community. Before, we used to have two specialized classrooms and then we had a resource program. As special education teachers, we did not interact as much as to now. It's the whole school working together. Having a team that supports you, I think that's a big difference. You need a few more colors, then you're good. I think of inclusion, I have to remind myself, oh, that, that is what we're doing. That's the official term, if you will, because it's just the way of life here. It's just, it just is who we are, and it is the practice that we will continue to have. It takes a lot of logistics, it takes some planning, it takes some staffing, it takes placing paraprofessionals in certain rooms or um, those types of things to make sure that we are meeting the needs of those students. They are identified with special needs for a reason, so having to go through all of that planning and scheduling and all of that is definitely necessary, but it's doable. Does it look like that? This mindset, this way of life, is something that we have instilled in our students from a very young age, whether it's a preschool classroom or an inclusive kindergarten classroom. There's no difference. That will be the way that they continue to grow and learn. Chrysalis. You think they're going to be a chrysalis? Yeah! yeah. Maybe. I think for a parent with a child who has special needs, I think there's no way not to be scared. I think there's no way to not sit in your fear until you experience it. Letting go of your child and putting them in someone else's hands is a really, really tough situation. Charlotte has really blossomed being with her gen ed students. Not only has she blossomed from her own personal growth, but the growth of the students around her. As the year has gone on, um, the children have really learned uh, who Charlotte is, what to expect from Charlotte, and how to care for her, essentially. Uh, and that was phenomenal. It wasn't something that I ever expected. There was a lot of fear. As parents, we have four other children. None have special needs. And so this was um, a very scary place for us. It was a very uncertain place for us. And sending um, her to school for seven, eight hours a day was absolutely terrifying, truly terrifying. I left every day crying. 
My husband did too. It's emotional. You always think as a parent, what is life going to be like for her? And is she going to be accepted? Or is she, you know, going to be wanted? Are students going to mistreat her? Do I have to worry about her safety? I can't think of a program that would have worked better for Charlotte. I can't imagine now an environment where Charlotte wouldn't have thrived better. And so I understand the fear because we felt the fear, but I would say to that parent, trust the process, trust the human process, trust in, in people as humans and the hearts that we all have. Over the last seven years that Otano has been a part of Special Olympics, we've had several programs in place. So having those all activities going on, we've been recognized as a Special Olympics Unified Champion School. Being included is something that all individuals deserve. Why not provide our students with an opportunity to learn respect and acceptance of others who may not look or act like they do? Ultimately, we are developing our leaders of tomorrow, and if we develop these students at an early age in elementary school to have an acceptance and an understanding of the diversities in the community, I believe that that's just only going to benefit us. And I hope that through this recognition, this nationwide recognition that other schools, they understand that they have the capacity and the ability to create something just as we have. It is amazing how much children can identify the need for kindness in one another and, and provide that. Personally, it makes me feel privileged. They will steal your heart and they definitely have stolen my heart. When you see them working together, it's their own little world. I think inclusion is a very important part of what our students need. And I think that together with more inclusion programs, the things just make a better world for our students to live in.